just for the camera, what's your name and and where are you from? My name's <laughs> my name's John Trudell. Uh, I'm from California. I know that humanity is not living in balance with nature. It's not happening. I mean, it's, and actually it's more than a little out of balance. Uh, humanity is actually, at this point, almost going against nature. It's beyond living out of balance. But I also think with humanity going against nature, that there's a small percentage a small number of human beings that are behind this and driving it and imposing it upon just humanity in general. In going against nature, what does that do to the survivability of humanity? <laughs> it reduces the it reduces the opportunities for human beings to continue to participate in the evolutionary reality indefinitely. It's bringing a definite conclusion to the ability of the human beings to participate in this evolutionary reality. You know, it, it's um, uh, because it's going against nature or the earth. I mean, you know, in, I mean, actually, in actual terms, you know, what what the industrial man is doing is is murdering the life support systems, murdering the water, the air. Mur murdering the life that gives us the ability to have life. You know, and that's really what we're faced with. We can call it poisoning the water or whatever, you know, but in the end, it's, it's, it's like an act of murder, genocide in a way. <coughs> Why don't we know that by murdering water, we murder ourselves? What about <coughs> man is it that we don't get that? Well, I think as human beings, we live in a technologic, perceptional, actual reality where a part of that technologic reality is that the civilizing process is it erases the memory of the human being. It erases the memory from the human being of being a human being. It's almost like a spirit, a, a severing, a severing of our connection to any spiritual reality. And in, and in once that has been imprinted into the consciousness of the human beings, see, then I think that's what makes these other things possible. It isn't that we're, as human beings, we're bad. It's got nothing to do with our badness. What it has to do is, is that there's a program going on that literally feeds off of the being part of human, eating our spirit. All right? and, and in order for all that to happen, then these imprinting things have to happen to our consciousness, and a part of that is to re erase the memory of the human being about being a human being. See, so we no longer participate in reality, perceiving reality as human beings. We partici participate in reality as feeling as either like um, we're oppressed culturally, ethnically, gender-wise, class-wise, but we participate in reality from the eyes of being victimized and, and very fearful and insecure. We don't think like human beings, but the reason for that is, is because there's been a deliberate suppression of our memory of that identity. Who is suppressing this, and where is that coming from? You talk a bit about a few. Can you elaborate on that? Well, I, I mean, I, I don't have any names. Uh, well, maybe a couple might jump to mind, but um, but on this planet, there's an industrial ruling class. And this industrial ruling class is the smallest percentage of human beings on this planet. And this industrial ruling class, the, gov the, go the, governments, the governments that are created are created to serve the needs of this industrial ruling class. And one of the needs of this industrial ruling class is they create these governments and, and to some degree these religions, all right, and these economic systems as a way of controlling the mass of human beings that they're feeding off, turning, you know, <laughs> and, and uh, but it's this industrial, you know, what's the percentage of people that own 60% of the resources on this planet? Then, then we're starting to get to who, who they are. They do have names. How do 
how can we deprogram ourselves? <coughs> Think more and believe less. You know, I, I uh, and I don't know, I'm not going to call it deprogram ourselves. It's, to me, it's really an issue of how do we recognize ourselves. You know, we need to recognize that we're human beings. Recognize that we're human beings and, and, and our connection to the reality of power is in that identity. Human, our bone, flesh, and blood, our DNA, we're literally made up of the metals, minerals, and liquids of the earth. We're, shape, we're part of the earth, we're shapes of the earth, like everything of the earth. And we have being, our being, our spirit. You know, and, and that being comes from, from our relationship to the sun-sky universe. Because, I mean, sunlight's literally like the sperm that brings life to the water-bearing womb that is the earth. So this is our being is connected to that. And all things of the earth have being because we all have, we're all made up the same stuff, just arranged differently and have the same relationship to sun-sky universe. Being, and we need to... So our, the reality of our relationship to power and purpose, so to speak, is in that identity. And now, so how do we recognize and, re, you know, get back to that identity? I don't have a specific, <laughs> I don't have a specific answer. But the closest I can say to it is that, is that if we would, a part of recognizing of ourselves is that to recognize our intelligence and understand the value of our intelligence. Because as human beings, our ability to access the reality of our power is in through clear and coherent use of our intelligence. See, our intelligence, that's the portal how we, we manifest and access the, our relationship into the reality of power as humans, is through, our, through the use of our intelligence. But we've been imprinted and programmed, you know, I mean, basically, where we're at now in the evolution of human beings, we're, we're basically in a period of time in this, in this industrial technologic world where the majority of the human beings participate in this reality based upon their fears and their doubts and insecurities. So their perception of their inabilities. And all that was imprinted in there to make us not recognize ourselves. And, and you know, and, and, and to understand the power and recognize the power of our intelligences, let's say through our fears and our doubts and in our insecurities, how bad can we make ourselves feel? And how does that affect the people around us? Well, that's power. That's our power. That's a, a manifestation of our personal power. But we've been imprinted to use it in this kind of a way. But so we do have power. It's in how we recognize it and choose to direct it and use it. So I would say the first step to this is like recognize the value of our intelligence and the power of our intelligence. Because I think that any, any person or people that would be concerned about saving the earth and saving creation and have this type of an awareness. I, I, think that it's, I think that a necessary component to that is to give thanks to their, however one perceives the creator, give thanks to the creator, number one, for life, and number two, for the gift of intelligence. To show respect for this, maybe because we need to show respect to our intelligence and maybe it's a part of our thanks that we give on a, on a recognition on, on a daily basis, on a, almost in a ritualistic way. Because we, our intelligence to me, I mean, it's, it's like our imagination, our creativity, our thoughts, and then our understanding, our misunderstanding, and then our actions is what we manifest. And, and I think that it's time for us to understand, look at, recognize, and attempt to understand the value of our intelligence, because whatever struggle is ahead of us, if we are to, to participate, continue to participate in the evolu evolutionary reality as human beings, it's going to take clear and coherent use of our intelligence to do it. Generationally, collectively, individually, but it's, that's what, it's, what it is going to take. Everything that has ever been done to create these emotional distortions in us has been done to keep us from using our intelligence clearly and coherently. Now, so, so how do we deprogram or get back? I mean, it, it goes back to the very basic. You know, we need to recognize ourselves. We really need to recognize ourselves. Then we can synchronize all the other things in a much more synchronized way. No, I'm just I'm <coughs> that and trying to weave it into what we're talking about, and it's just really powerful. As you're saying, I, I would love to know from your point of view what 
there's two, it's a two part question, and one's a down, the darker side, which is, I'll do the darker side first. Which is, well, I understand dark. <laughs> do you believe um, that we're approaching a bottleneck? Or, you know, the title of this film is The 11th Hour, and a lot of people we're talking to believe that if certain things aren't done quickly, that, you know, a lot of people will lose their lives just from natural catastrophes and things like that. Do you believe that we're at that point from what you see? And if so, how do we get out of the situation? You answered that a little bit in your last question, but... Well, no, I don't believe anything, <laughs> right? Uh, uh, I, I don't trust the word or the concept. I think it's much more realistic to say either I know or I don't know or I think. Because be, for me, when I, I mean, just I have to do this. I can't help it. Because with the belief thing, it means it's like I'm not being. Why don't I just acknowledge I don't know? You know, and what, and it, and it's, uh, and in, and 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 think about things. See, I think we should say, think in terms of I think this rather than I believe this, because I, I think we'll activate the coherency system a little bit. Uh, about the bottleneck and the thing, you know, in the race to midnight, it's after 11. You know, uh, and and what can be done about it, because it's, it's not that nothing can be done about it, but again, this comes back to how clearly and coherently we use our intelligence. Because I think that Number one, there's no revolutionary solution to anything that we're dealing with. There may be revolutionary stop gaps, but there's no revolutionary solution. It's about, we're a part of evolution. It's an evolutionary reality, so we, there's an evolutionary solution. I think to head this, to head into the direction of this thing, this bad that is coming, I think that we have time. I think that it can be turned around in two generations, but it's going to take clear and coherent use of our intelligence to think our way through this, not to emotionally react to the bad guys because the, we emotionally react. We end up doing the same old stuff over and over again and, and the bad guys just get badder and badder. That seems to be a historical reality. But also a part of that historical reality is that every rebellion that goes on, our cause may be just and right and all of the good, you know, all the pretty flag stuff, right? But in reality, but in reality, in every situation, we always, we were emotionally reacting by trying to challenge their ways by their rules. We weren't thinking outside of the box, you know, and, and but we've been programmed not to think outside of the box because we've been programmed not to like ourselves and be insecure and this and that, so not trust certain abilities that we have. Now, so we have to get past that. I think that it's, you know, it, it's, if we can just seek to be as clear and coherent with our intelligence as we can, and, and, and within two generations, see, we, because that will create answers and solutions to problems that exist that have no answers and solutions. But again, it's about to use, you know, to be as clear and coherent as we can, not emotional reactionaryism, but clear, coherent, responsible, initiated response to what is going on. And, 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 you know, because we have, be, be prepared for this because there's going to be a lot of, the way that it's headed now, there's a lot of dying coming. Tremendous amounts of dying because the planet is overpopulated, the resources are dwindling, that, that industrial ruling class, you know, they want what they, they, they want to keep what they have. They're on a very, they're on an anti-life destructive course with, with the future. You know, so for that industrial ruling class, and the dwindling resources environment we're talking about and in the overpopulation, they need to purge this planet of huge, tremendous numbers of the human population. And they're gonna do it. Right? I mean, that's what, they're, they're setting it all in motion now. See, so that's where it's headed. And this is why, to me, it's, where, it's very crucial because I don't, I don't think that time is against us. Time is an ally. The real issue is, are we time's ally? Will we take the responsibility to use our intelligence clearly and coherently. Not be overwhelmed by the idea or say, how do I do that? But just head in that direction to think things out. Because, 
because when you get to the realities of power, the illusions, authority as an illusion of power, the state and all this and that, all right, all right, then we're always outnumbered there. But if you, if you look at the reality of power, and say the reality of power is in clear and, conscious, uh, clear and co uh, consci conscientious thought, clear and coherent thought, then we outnumber them. It's just a matter of us getting to that point where we recognize that we recognize our own value. We're in a system that has devalued us, and see, and, and, and the trick of the devaluing was it got us to devalue ourselves. One last thing, um, unless you want to have, make any other statement, I have one last question. Does anyone have any other my, my, All right, I want to make one statement. Please. All right. <laughs> It's about the ma it, no no. It's about the math of the IQ, and um, we know George Bush isn't intelligent enough, intelligent enough to think up all this mess, but we keep blaming him. So what does the math of the IQ say about our intelligence? <laughs> so it's my puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. Um, well, there's one other thing because you're so good on this, and, I, and it's, it's an easy question, but I want you on camera for the answer. I have two more questions. Do you think it's a moral obligation to protect the planet and, future, and protect the evolutionary process that we're on? No, I don't think it's a moral obligation. I think it's a spiritual responsibility. It's our, it's our responsibility. Yeah, a spiritual responsibility. The last thing is, we're compiling at the end of all of these interviews a message to, let's say, the, a generation 50 years from now or 100 years from now. What would you like to say to them, given what you know about the world right now, if they were able to watch you? Use your intelligence clearly and coherently. Think. Thank you. I have a good question. I don't know if it's yeah. Worth. Just like how how you came to where you stand in your ideas. Say that again. How do you have you come to this place in your life and your ideas? How do you how what path brought you to this place? <laughs> I went crazy when I was about six, <laughs> right? And, and never could synchronize it. Never could really synchronize with with the normal and the sane. I mean, really, I mean, because I look at the life, the normal and the sane and the typical, they're powerless, they feel powerless, they feel overwhelmed, you know, and me, I, I kind of went a little crazy about that age because reality changed for me. And I went out and I lived, I lived my life how I lived it. No big plan, just I lived it the way I lived it at any given moment. And I've learned what I learned from that living. You know, I can't take, I can't take any credit for anything, you know. I just, <laughs> I mean, I'd like, a lot of things I'd really like to take, I mean, I think I would like to take some credit for a lot of it, but I'm not sure that I ever really know what I'm doing, <laughs> you know. So, I mean, that's really the best I could answer that. It just turned out the way that it turned out. But, I, but what I did learn from all of that is, you know, I'm, not, I'm, not un, I'm nothing unique or anything like that. I, I just some kind of a way stumbled on some of the abilities that we all have, and I just stumbled upon them in me, within me in my own manner and fashion. You know, but it, it, I mean, um, yeah, no, I, <laughs> I just was born, <laughs> went through every day till I got here to this spot. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>